time where there where there is more okay. inf more information that is available. So what I have now is not enough to present a clear and complete overview of the topic. So it'll come up soon, hopefully within the next week. And then uh, I want to make sure everything is, it's kind of a broad topic and includes a lot of points that need to be uh, re revisited and repolished and represented. Uh, so uh, yeah, we'll do another topic today. Guru Maharaj, may I request you very humbly to please tilt the screen a little bit, please? Perfect. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Om again to Midandasya Ganajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yenatas my Shri Gudavena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stapti Tam Yenabutale Swayam Rupa Kedam Mayam the Dati Swam Padanti Kam Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Butale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namini Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvani Pacharine never says a Sunyavari Pastyat Yare Satarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadat Har Shiva Sadi Gora Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare um, Srila Prabhupada emphasized and gave us in printing four books that were the basic principle of the foundation for the philosophical teachings of Krishna consciousness when he first began in the United States in the late 1960s. Those four books were um, teachings of Lord Chaitanya, Nectar of Devotion, Sri Upanishads, and uh, the Bhagavad Gita. So these four books, and he emphasized these four books as the foundation for the entire philosophical teachings. Since then, teachings of Lord Chaitanya has expanded into the life and teachings of Lord Chaitanya given to us by Srila Krishna Das Kavi Raj Goswami. So these four books are basically the teachings. Now, one of them is the handbook for execution of devotional service. In order, to, in order to know how something works, there has to be a manual, just like when you see there's a machine. And usually well, every machine comes with a particular manual for operating instructions, for repair, repair instructions, for maintenance instructions, um, the manuals are always accompanying the machine because without having that manual, then there will be many mistakes in, in the operation of the machine. So in the same way, bhakti is a science. It's the science of the soul's relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Based on the principle of serving the Lord, with a desire to please the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now in that category of bhakti, there are many subcategories which make up bhakti itself. So bhakti is a, well, an aggregate of a, a number of different principles which lead to certain activities. And uh, this is explained somewhat in the Nectar of Devotion, where there is one chapter, it's called the, the Principles of Devotional Service. And there are 64 principles. Srila Prabhupada has really summarized the whole process in devotional service. He said, devotional service simply consists of chanting the holy names of the Lord, avoiding the offenses and following the regulative principles. 
And when he meant by regulative principles, he didn't simply mean those four restrictions that we avowed to avoid at the time of our initiation. He was referring to the 64 principles that are mentioned in the nectar devotion. 39 of them are do's and 25 of them are, are don'ts. So there are do's and there are don'ts which comprise the whole process of devotional service. So if anybody wants to know what makes up the activities of devotional service, you go and you read those 64 principles. Um, in the Astanga yoga system, in order for one to begin the process of yoga, one should know what are the vidis and nishedas. Nishedas means things you don't do, which take away from one's progress. And vidis means things you must do in order to make progress. So bhakti is consisting of these two categories, things to do and things to avoid. Now, when you go through the 64, each one requires, at least most of them require some explanations. So Krishna is very merciful. And in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna has summarized the entire, Krishna himself in his instructions to Uddhava, he speaks these 64 principles and he condenses it down to 15. So what is there in 64 is now in 15, which comprises the whole bhakti yoga process. So summarizing, condensing, and uh, consolidating these principles, we have come up with 15 solid principles. Now, if we go to the Srimad Bhagavatam, the 11th canto, 20th, uh, 20th, I'm sorry, 19th chapter, chapter number 19 of the 11th canto. If we could turn to that. Is anybody there? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Guru Maharaj, 11th canto, yes. 19th chapter. Oh, Satya Bhama, go ahead. Yes, I'm doing it. One second, Mataji. Okay. 11th canto, 19th chapter, verse number 20. 11th canto. Just one second, Guru Maharaj. 19th chapter. And it's, there's five verses in one. Verse 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Yes, Guru Maharaj is open. I'm just sharing it now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So these this is these are Krishna. Krishna is speaking. What are the 15 principles that make up devotional service? And he says, firm faith in the blissful narrations of my pastimes. Constantly chanting of my glories, unwavering attachment to ceremony worship of me, praising me through beautiful hymns, great respect for my devotional service, offering obeisances with the entire body, performing first class worship of my devotees, consciousness of me and all living entities, Offering of ordinary bodily activities in devotional service. Use of words to describe my qualities. Offering the mind to me. Rejection of all material desires. Giving up wealth for my devotional service. Renouncing material sense gratification and happiness. And performing all desirable activities such as charity sacrifice, chanting, vows, and austerities with the purpose of achieving me. These constitute actual religious principles by which those human beings who have actually surrendered themselves to me automatically develop love for me. What other purpose or goal could remain for my devotee? Hmm. So in a very intelligent way, Krishna summarizes 
in these six, 64 principles into 15. And then each one of them requires explanations. And you can see there are certain things that you don't do. Just like here it says, the rejection of all material desires, giving up wealth for my devo devotional service, renouncing material vows, renouncing material sense gratification and, ha and happiness. And then the positive one, narrating my pastimes, chanting my glories, doing worship, praising, respect, of Dandavats, worship of my devotees, consciousness of me of all living entities. And he goes down the list. So he starts with the with the vidis, and then he goes into the nishedas. So if we can learn and understand each of these and the different categories of activities that which fall within these. 15, because you have to see that these are consolidated principles. They're not details. When you say first firm faith in my blissful narrations of my pastimes, there are so many categories of pastimes. And there are many incarnations that perform these different pastimes. Constant chanting of my glories not only means the holy name, but also the glories of Krishna's activities in his different dhams. So this constitutes what we need to know in devotional service. Because devotees ask, well, what is devotional service all about? Well, here it is. It's all laid out and it's clear. One of the ones I would, uh, I would like to say here, renouncing material sense gratification and happiness and performing all desirable activities such as charity, sacrifice, chanting vows, austerities. Um, devotional service is situated on the platform of selflessness. In other words, everyone should understand that whatever I do in devotional service should be done in the mood of trying to please the object of my service, whether it's the devotees, the Lord, following the instructions of the spiritual master. In other words, there is a focus away from oneself and on the Lord. Um, there, there are those who worship the Lord or even perform service to the Lord out of fear of reprisal or a fear of some kind of repercussions by not doing it. In other words, they are forced out of the fear perspective to do these things. And therefore, sometimes they say, People preach, well, if you don't serve the Lord, you're going to go to hell. If you don't obey, you're going to suffer. So that's the lowest stage of motivation. It's a type of motivation, but it's not very sustaining, especially for those who are uh, intelligent. They're more or less, you motivate someone by fear because they want something and if they don't get it, then they'll think, well, I'll lose something or I'll get something I don't want. And therefore the motivation is somewhat of a fear process. Um, generally we do that with children at a certain age when we want them to behave. Okay, if you don't clean your room, then you can't, uh, you can't go out and see your friends today. So there's a kind of like, if you don't do this, you're gonna suffer in this way. Kind of a reprisal type of uh, preaching. Uh, that's the lowest stage. And uh, generally it goes on 
in many places in religious societies, even within ISKCON, but it's not for intelligent people. It's generally for those who are less intelligent and all they know is reprisals or repercussions for not doing the right thing. So for intelligent people, they don't, they're not inspired by such fearful type of terminologies. Just like we have this situation in the world now that people are being put into a fear aspect in order to comply to certain rules and regulations. It's all about creating fear. And it works because people are generally fearful and especially when they have certain interests at heart, um, they act to avoid the repercussions of something, even though they may not be inspired to do the activity. So here's the point. It's more like a forced thing. Oh, all right, I'll worship God because, you know, if I don't, you know, I won't be able to go do this. I won't be able to get this. It's all about punishment. I mean, you see, and even there's some traditions that emphasize that as foremost. They try to scare their followers into doing the right thing, speaking about the repercussions of not following. Of course, we use that also, but in a very intelligent and very simplified way, and not in, not in a preaching way to uh, create, because Prabhupada writes that one should understand this process by one's intelligence and act, and act accordingly. So therefore a devotee questions, why am I doing what am I doing? And there's an answer. And unless that answer is understood and applied, then the devotee still remains somewhat uncertain why I should do what I'm doing or what I'm being asked to do or what I'm supposed to do. So that's low. And uh, it doesn't attract people who are actually intelligent. Intelligent person is not motivated by fear. Uh, higher than that is the happiness that here it says that one should give up material sense gratification and happiness. So this is the second thing. Well, I want to be happy and life is about being happy and whatever I do should give me some happiness. Or if it doesn't happen immediately, whatever I do should bring happiness in the future. Either extended desires for happiness or immediate desires for happiness. And so one thinks, all right, I'll do this activity. I know it's gonna bring me happiness. But if I have a doubt that I won't, it won't bring me happiness, I may also hesitate to carry it out. Well, why should I do it? What's in it for me? Sometimes it's no, not so overt that a person thinks like that, but in the back of their mind, they're looking for some gain through spiritual activities. So that's why it says here, one should renounce happiness, that had the, the desire for personal happiness. It doesn't mean that happiness is not available. It comes when Krishna is pleased. When Krishna is pleased by your devotional service, you're happy. <laughs> Sometimes, what uh, the devotee asks Prabhupada, uh, how do we know when Krishna is, is pleased? And Prabhupada said, when you feel pleased. What he meant is, if you water the root of the tree, then the branches and twigs, the flowers, everything connected with the root gets the benefit of the watering process. So when Krishna is pleased by our devotional service, there's a sense of satisfaction and peace that comes within the mind of the devotee or even happiness. And the more one pleases Krishna, the, the more one feels these satisfaction, peace and happiness. So it's, it's not that we're renouncing happiness, we're renouncing the desire to become happy. That's all. 
that this, that happiness comes from the results of pleasing Krishna. But then there is that there is that class of devotees that think, well, why should I do this? I don't see any any happiness in it for me. Or I did it before and I didn't feel happy, so why should I do it? I'm chanting my rounds. I'm not feeling happy. Then why should I chant my rounds? And you know, it's supposed to make me happy. It's not making me happy, so therefore. Why waste time? I can do something that makes me happy. So this desire for happiness is a little better than the, than the principle of the fear element, but it's still on the lower level of consciousness. It's me oriented. Then higher than that is duty. It's my duty. And therefore, I'm doing it. It doesn't matter whether I'm happy or not. It's my duty. You get up in the morning, you think, well, I have to go to work today. I don't want to go to work, but I'm supposed to go to work. But it's a little bit more than that. That example maybe is a little flimsy. But what it means is that it's my duty to serve the Lord because I'm part and parcel of the Lord. I've been given duties in order to connect with Krishna through these duties. So this is my duty. A sense of uh, obedience that comes with accepting one's position as servant. And one finds happiness in that. And Prabhupada explains that, and also Bhaktivinoda Thakur very carefully explains that this platform of duty is the platform for execution devotional service. Um, happiness may come, happiness may not come. Feelings of inspiration may be there. Feelings of inspiration may not be there at all. Still, it's my duty to serve. So I do my duty. And then, of course, the highest platform beyond duty is spontaneous attraction for Lord, for the Lord. I want to serve the Lord because I'm attracted to him. I'm, I have a natural affection that is developing for him. And therefore, in order to show my love for the Lord, or my, show my uh, ways to make him happy, I'll do something without even asking. It doesn't matter what it is. If it pleases the Lord, it's perfect. Hmm. It's like Arjun. Arjun had so many questions why he didn't want to fight on the battlefield. And Krishna acknowledged all those reasons that Arjuna was presenting. He's saying, yeah, you're a very, very nice reason. You, you are very thoughtful. But then he said, asochan avasochan stvam pratyabari jivasa say, gatasun agadatum scha panditaha. He said, you're speaking very learned words, but you don't know the principles of religion. Those who are, those who are wise lament neither for the living and the dead. So he basically called him a fool for acting on the bodily platform of life and thinking in terms of material desires and material results. So this is the platform where a devotee goes way beyond that. And he serves just because Krishna is his all attractive, worshipable deity. And it has an affection, an affinity to, or a connection with the mood of affection. As we get to know Krishna from these 15 processes here, we see faithful blissming, blissfuls of his narrations of pastimes chanting his glories, glorifying him through beautiful hymns, various types of activities, these inspire and awaken attraction for Krishna. So bhakti in the beginning is rules and regulations, but as it moves forward through the different stages of bhakti, at one point one comes to spontaneous and natural attraction for Krishna. Therefore, one is, it doesn't matter what the service is, it's because it's devotional service, one is absorbed in 
carrying it out in the desire with a desire to please the Lord. So that's perfection. So this is bhakti in both in the consciousness of how it should be executed and in the activities itself as mentioned here by Krishna. And Krishna sums up the translation by saying, what other purpose or goal could remain for my devotee? Devotee is simply happy and satisfied to engage in any one or many of these processes that he mentions here in this particular uh, purport, uh, particular translation, I'm sorry. Okay, so we can stop there and see if there's any comments or questions. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for enlightening us about these four books that Srila Prabhupada gave us to follow, and especially the instructions in the Nectar of Devotion on carrying out the 64 principles of Bhakti Yoga. Thank you for also talking about the condensed uh, version that, Shila, uh, that Krishna gave in the 15 uh, points in uh, Canto 11, 19, chapter 20 to 24. So dear devotees, we have received so many different wonderful transcendental nuggets of spiritual knowledge from Guru Maharaj today. Please come forward to share your realizations, your questions with Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I humble obeisances to you. Hare Krishna, Malila Manjari. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, while I was listening to you, I had this uh, question that um, he explained about the different stages, like, you know, that someone is motivated by fear, someone is motivated by duty in different ways. Uh, I had a practical question, like, uh, while we are performing devotional service, um, it's um, also important to take care of our own needs, I feel. And where does that fall into this uh, description that you just shared? Yeah, it's, it's parallel to pure devotional service. These are principles of pure devotional service. That is called Gona Bhakti. Gona Bhakti means those activities which are supportive of the of devotional service but are more or less related to um, personal concerns such as eating sleeping working recreation um, maintaining family members uh, working at an occupation these are called gona g-a-u in a gona bhakti and uh, when one's life is simply focused on devotional service then these activities that one performs in order to maintain oneself are called gona bhakti or parallel activities of devotional service and they are as you say their needs uh, we have to be careful to understand what is what is a need and what is simply a uh, desire. So there are some basic principles there. So they they don't fall into these 15 categories. They're, they're understood as supportive. And Krishna mentions them in the Bhagavad Gita. He said, one who eats too much or eats too little doesn't sleep, sleeps too much or sleeps too little cannot perform the yoga system. He said, one who is temperate and eating, sleeping, working in recreation you know, can perform the process of yoga. Like that. So you know, we find there are these principles of self-maintenance. Bhakti Vinoda Kaur talks about them in somewhat of detail in Shiksham, Chaitanya Shikshamrita. Uh, as foundational for uh, 
keeping our consciousness focused on the essential. If we're not taking, if we're not maintaining proper health or care like that, it will can it interfere with the execution of devotional service. So, but they're all, they're supportive. They're not activities of pure devotional service. Yes, Maharaj, thank you. Okay, Hare Krishna. Uh, yeah, at, uh, at lower levels of devotional service, at least in the neophyte stage, it seems that like these needs are very important and they must be um, like taken care of carefully to maintain or support devotional life. Yeah, but that doesn't, we can get overindulged in these things too, you yeah. know, that's the danger. Yes, we, can, we can do it too little or we can do it too much. That's why Krishna calls it, you know, uh, he calls it uh, temperate, being temperate. Temperate means moderate. Moderate means balanced, balanced in these things. <laughs> and the whole yoga system is based on balance. <laughs> Balancing everything in life in a way that supports everything else. If we're out of balance in one area, it could throw us out of balance in another area. But as we make advancement, then you see if a devotee doesn't get anything to eat that day or doesn't sleep enough that day or something happens on the material level, it doesn't affect their devotional service. It's generally for those who are, you know, in a neophyte stage. Yes, Maharaj, thank you. Okay. Taking care of the body and the necessities related to the body, it's, it's called uh, we call it a necessary burden. The word necessary there is say that we must do it. And burden means it's all about something uh, material <laughs> in the sense that well, if we don't do it, it might impinge on our devotional life. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Just uh, piggybacking a little bit on uh, Leela Bhantari's question, uh, Srila Prabhupada emphasized so much on health. You know, he always wrote, uh, hoping this meets you in the best of health, you are ever well wisher, and was always so concerned to um, give remedies to the disciples who were suffering from some ailment or the other. So uh, when we are not so well versed in devotional service, we may be very much plagued by all these things. So we should take care of these things so that we can continue performing devotional service nicely. Is, is, that, is my understanding correct? We do that anyway. I mean, that's a, just a natural pr principle of life. Yeah. Oh. But if you're executing devotional service in, in the proper way, then you'll also learn how to balance all these other things. That's why Krishna talks about moderation in activities. Balance is the, really the principle of successful life. And we learn to balance things accordingly. If we get out of, out of balance for a long period of time or extended period of time, we might find ourselves struggling with the basic activities of devotional service. Keep a balance. That's why Krishna talks about that in the third chapter, that one should regulate the activities of, the, the, of one's life in order to not to be victimized by the restless mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Yes, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada, all glory to you, Maharaj. Uh, this was a very wonderful verse, and thanks for explaining it very nicely. Uh, I don't have a question, but it's just a comment that the verse Krishna says so clearly the principles of devotional service, and Prabhupada has explained it so nicely in all these various books and Srimad Bhagavatam. All it requires is from a sincere devotee is to follow it under the guidance of a spiritual master with sincerity. Mm -hmm. So this is so wonderful. Yeah, anything you want to be successful in, you have to put your attention on it. <laughs> we do that in the material world if we're enthusiastic about gaining something in our, in our occupation or in life in general. So why not in devotional service? It has to be done with enthusiasm, with intelligence. Like that. The intelligence is provided finally by the instructions of the spiritual master. Uh, there are two principles. There are general instructions, which Krishna gives here in this one, which is not just more than generally. These are the these are the principles, principal activities of pure devotional service, then we may find that we also have specific instructions that are given to us in terms of our what service is required. When we get those, then we can focus on that and make that our success in devotional service. If we're given a particular service, we can simply uh, perfect that service in devotional service and offer it to Krishna. We don't have to, we can, it's easy, becomes more streamlined, more direct, easy. Like Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati told Srila Prabhupada, you know, go to the West and preach. I mean, that was, the, and Prabhupada had tried so many other things prior to that. He tried to establish Krishna consciousness in India, but he kept failing. And finally, he understood that this was the instruction I should follow. At the time, he wasn't ready for that. And so he was still thinking, well, if I can establish something in India, then I can have a foundation for going to the West. But he said Krishna didn't want that. He simply wanted me to go. Because the instruction itself was the, was the indication that the, the success is in within that instruction, just follow it to, to your capacity. And he did, because he did, everything came. And that works for, for each and every one of us. If we have an instruction, we, if we, if we don't have a specific instruction and we follow the general instructions, and also point ourselves in a certain direction, which we might be inclined to. Everyone should, everyone should be able to be expert at one service and able to perform any other service. It's not that you have to become expert in every service, but one, you should be one, everyone should be expert in one particular type of service and been able to do any other services that's required like we might be, we might be preachers, but we can sometimes cook sometimes, or we have sometimes we may also clean the temple, or we may also do some puja, or we also may also give counseling. We can do a little, and because it's devotional service, devotees can do different things. But then there's one thing that we perfect, and that becomes our focus. When you don't have that in your devotional service, you find it becomes hard to stay steady. What is that service that I can really offer, put my heart into it and then offer to Krishna? We can get advice for that also in order to fine tune our, our, our focus, but there's, everyone should think in that way. 
Thank you, Maharaj. And we are at least very fortunate, at least I consider myself very fortunate to somehow come in association with devotees in Prabhupada's books and his instructions and your instructions to daily lectures. So, Maharaj, thank you very much. We are very Krishna. grateful for that. Yeah, we, we have all been blessed by Srila Prabhupada's mercy. By his determination to spread Krishna consciousness, he has uh, given something to everyone. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Dear devotees, please come forward to ask any further questions if you have them. Thank you. Okay, maybe we can stop here. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you to all the devotees. Panchakalpa Tarubhishya. Kripa Sindhu Vedasya. Anam Bhavane Vyo. Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha. Gaur Bhakti Vinda Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Asatos Prabhu Ki Jai. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna well, Maharaj. Well. You look well. Thank you Maharaj. Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Nobody can guess what I did today. Try to guess what I did today. Something you don't do every day. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, Maharaj. Yeah, and I'm not asking you to know. I'm asking you to guess. Made a sport? We do that sometimes, but not today. So this is something what? spirit spiritual. Uh, Maharaj don't... is Havan. Havan. Huh? Havan. Nashi Yagna. What did I, what's that one say? I can't Black. hear. I can't hear what's being said. He was a Havan. You did Yagna Maharaj. Yagna Maharaj, yeah. I did a Yagna. You can see my Yagna mark on my forehead. Yeah. Yes. Black. Yes. 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 That was the giveaway. It was a it was unoppressed. Anaprashna Prashna. Who was the baby Guru Maharaj? Huh? Who was the baby who was getting the Anaprashna? You. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, no, it was um our temple president's brother's wife. Mm -hmm. He he, uh, his brother departed uh, a few months ago, and uh, the baby was just born right after, just after he departed, or uh, just before he departed. So the ceremony we did today. It was quite nice. These are called the stages of life. They're called rites of passage from one stage to another. So that must be done accordingly. 
And there are 16 samskaras. This is called Anaprash. Out of the 16 samskaras, there are seven which are prominent. And there, out of those seven, there's five that are that everyone should perform. Mm -hmm. So it's important. Okay. All right, thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, today is Sri Lasya's birthday. Lavanya Mataji. Sri Lasya, Lavanya Mataji, and Sri Nivas Prabhu's daughter's birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. She is not at home, Guru Maharaj. Otherwise, I would have uh, called her home. She's out so early in the morning? Um, she went for a badminton camp, Guru Maharaj. Oh, okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.